kampe usemi utakao tambulika na wote ambao tunamsikiza na utunenee kwa wakati huu sasa hivi na ni katika jina la Yesu Kristo tumeomba na kuamini amen karibu sana sijasema mketi Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Praise the Lord Church. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. First and foremost, I'm so grateful to God. For, sana. for this opportunity. Ya huu. I don't take it for granted. Tukui, tukui msaha. Because I believe there are many of my young fellow ladies and gentlemen. Kwa sababu ninaamini kuna vijana wengi wenzangu. Who could have done the same thing that I'm doing this moment. Wakefanya kazi nao fanya asubuhi ya leo. But there are things we call times and seasons. Lakini kuna mambo tunaita nyakati and, na majira. And I uh, 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 um, I'm believing that this was a season and time made for me by God. Na ninajua kwamba huu ni wakati wangu Mungu alikuwa amenitegea. That I may stand before his servants and children and daughters to speak his word. Nisimame mbele watumishi wake kunena neno lake. I'm so grateful to God. Nashukuru sana Mwenyezi Mungu. I'm also grateful to our father. Na shukuru sana kwa sababu ya baba. Yeah, it's not everybody who will allow you to stand in the house. Sio kila mtu atakubalisha usimame. So I'm honored. Nimefanya shukrani. And to our reverend Mwidi. Pia mchungaji Mwidi. And the pa pastoral team. Na pia washungaji wote. And to my dad. Na pia baba yangu. He's my dad, spiritual dad. Ni baba wangu wa kiroho. So um Uh, 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 um, one, one, one thing I want to let us know Kitu moja bao nataka mjue, There is power in praising God kuna gufu katika kumwabudu Mwenyezi Mungu Tell your neighbor for me that there is power in praising God Abia jirani yako kwa miaba yako kuna gufu kwa ajili ya kumwabudu Mungu I was looking I was I was just reading the word of God Nilikuwa nasoma neno la Bwana Going through some people who praise God and Mountains were moved in their lives. Nikaona watu ambao walimwabudu Mungu na milima ikadolewa mbele mbele yao. Some people who praise God and their situation were changed. Watu wengine waliomwabudu Mungu mambo yao ikabadilishwa. We have Jonah. Tunayona. Jonah when he was in the in the belly of the fish. Yona ambao alikuwa katika utubu wa samaki. This guy realized that the only thing that I can do is to praise. Alijua kile tu ninafanya ni kuabudu. And in the process of praising, na katika kuabudu kule, God spoke to the fish. Mungu akasugumza na samaki. And the fish got disturbed by what it had swallowed. Na Mungu akakawa na shauku kwa vile samaki alikuwa ameza nini. The fish had to go and vomit him. Samaki lazima geda atapike. Now I want you to understand this. Nataka uelewe hivi. It did not, didn't vomit him inside the sea. Hakuweza kutapika kwenye bahari. <laughs> Tell your neighbor for me, it did not vomit him inside the sea. Abia jirani ya kwamba samaki hakutapika kwenye maji. It Ama was directed to where it should take him. Alikuwa samaki alielekezwa mahali ataenda kutapika. Tell your neighbor for me God has a plan for you. Abia jirani Mungu ana mwelekeo mwema juu yako. When you read in the book of Acts. Unasoposoma katika matendo ya nitume. The story of all the, 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 the two guys in the jail. Wakati wale wanaume akina Sauli walikuwa kwenye korokoro. They were in jail not because they did anything wrong. Hawako kwenye jela maana walitenda mambo baya. The only thing that took them to the jail. Kile kiliwapeleka pale korokoroni. It is because they they they, they rebuked or they yeah they drove out demons of, out of a lady in a city. Ni kwa sababu walimtoa msichana alikuwa amepagana na You realize that some things that you are doing in your life Concerning God's kingdom will drive you in a certain jail in your Mambo life. unaofanya katika kiugu atakuperekeza mambo yingine. But still God has a plan. Lakini Mungu ana mawazo mema juu yako. So I would I would like us to praise the Lord. Nigetaka tumwabudu Mungu. These guys never fasted and pray. Hawa kina Sauli hakuweza kufunga na kuomba. I'm not saying it is bad to fast and pray. Sisemi ni mbaya kufunga na kuomba. But sometimes the problem that we are going through does not need our fasting and praying. Lakini sasa singine mashida tunayopitia hahitaji kufunga na kuomba. I'm saying the problems that we are going through does not need us to fast and pray. Shida tunayopitia hahitaji kwa wakati kufunga na kuomba. They just need us to give God praise. Yahitaji tu kumpatia Mungu kifo na shukrani. These guys praise God until the doors were open. Waliweza kumwabudu Mungu mpaka milango ikafunguka. These guys sang. Waliiba, walisifu 
doors were open. I want to declare to somebody today under the authority of the Lord given to me as his daughter that as you praise God, your doors are going to open. That as you praise God, your prison is going to be no more. I love praising God because He is good. He has been Jehovah over my life. I am not ashamed to say that He is God. And I want to declare to the young ladies and men in the house that if you don't have God, you don't have life. I say if you don't know God, you are messed. I, I, let me tell us something that it is kitu. only God who can take you to your destiny it is only God who can lead you to where you want to be yeah it is only God you might have everything that you call money material things but those things none of a person that you know died and was buried with them I'm saying nobody will die and be buried with what you have in this world. Let us not panya. concentrate so much with what we hold in this earth. It is shall be nacho. left here in on earth. But one thing I know, Jabo when you hold on, on, hold on to the word of God, there is eternal life for us. There is eternal life for us. There is eternal life for us. As we praise God, I want us to forget of the issues that Tunapo brought us in this mungu place. Mungu sao, Let us forget about the issues that you had come to tell God. Can I tell us something? When you are praising God, you don't tell him the, the, the needs that you have. For example, if I'm praising my dad, I won't go and tell him I have this and this issue. I will be talking about him. I will be telling him how he is. I will be appreciating him. So I want us to get that revelation today and go before the Lord. Don't mind what your neighbor is saying. Don't mind if they are lifting hands or they are kneeling down. We are praising God. And as we praise God, I say as we praise God, every door that has been closed in your life, everything that has been interfering with your life, it is going to back. It is going to back. It is going to back. Come on, let us praise the Lord. Give us a song. Give us a song. Yeah. Hallelujah. We are going to lift up our hands and we are going to worship God. As a moment of fact that God created us to worship. Everything that he created on this earth created for his own worship. Mungu you are created for worship. And at this time I want us to lift up our hands. Just worship God. Tell God how good he is. Come on, just worship God. Lift up your voices and give God all the glory. We worship you, Jesus. We give you the glory, Father. We honor you this moment, oh God. We proclaim you, oh God. Come on, just worship God. Worship, 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 worship. Lift up your voices and worship God. We give you the glory, Jesus. Oh, we worship you. Come on, just worship him. Just worship him. Come on, just lift up your voices and say that he is exalted. Oh, you're exalted, Jesus. Oh, you're magnified. Oh, you're glorified. You're lifted up on high, Jesus. Come on, just worship, worship. Lift up your voices. Press on in right now. Press on in right now. Press on in right now. For he's exalted.
We give you glory and we give you honor. Thank you for loving us even when we are sinners. Thank you for forgiving our sins. Jehovah God. Father, is we are from you. We pray that you may speak unto us. Father, I pray that you may anoint my tongue. Whatever I speak here, Jehovah, not what I want your people to hear. Neither is it what they want to hear. But Lord, it's what you want them to hear. How I pray the Lord, you will meet us to the point of our name. For the glory and tone of your name. And the church say, Amen. Let's celebrate the Lord as you have your soul. I'll just ask like my brother. Do you believe? Talk to me. Do you believe? Tell your neighbor what you believe in. Praise the Lord. Again I say I'm humbled. 
na kwa, nasema ya kwamba nimenyenyekezwa and i thank god na nashukuru mungu um today we going to 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 the topic of what i'm going to speak about is from you from your emptiness there is greatness kichwa ya ile nataka kusugumza kwamba katika ule utupu wako kuna ukuu tell your neighbor for me you know i like i like it when you are talking because people will be busy listening yeah Na so tell your tunaukea. neighbor abia jirani that your emptiness katika utupu wako out of your emptiness ya kupitia utupu wako there is greatness kuna ukuu we reading from the book of ruth tunasoma katika kitabu cha ludhu It is a story that we know. Ni maneno ni kitu ambacho unajua, maneno ambayo unajua. So I'm going to paraphrase. Kwa hivyo nitaenda kupitia hapa na pale. But I will concentrate on second I mean Ruth chapter 2 verse 8 to 9. I will concentrate on Ruth chapter 2. Nitapitia naelekea katika kitabu cha Ruth sura ya pili. Verse 8 and 9. Mstari wa 8 na 9. Chapter 3 sura ya tatu verse 10 to 13 stari wa 10 hadi 13 chapter 4 sura ya 4 17 to 16 17:16 okay the bible talks of naomi i mean emil emi emileki em, sorry uyo bibia naongea kuhusu alimeleki yeah they were struck by drought walipatwa na janga raja and they decided to move na wakaamua kutoka they went to another land wakaenda katika nchi nyingine where they went to seek for food mahali walienda kutafuta chakula now w- o- when they reached on when they reached to that land or Wal- when they reached that land walipofika katika nchi ile there was food kulikuwa na chakula but my problem is lakini shida yangu ni hii they never consulted god hawakuweza kutafuta They never consulted God. Hawakutafuta ushauri wa Mungu. And that's why when they reached in that land. Na diposa walipofika katika nchi. They reckon that they stayed there for 10 years. Bibi inasema kwa walipata pale katika miaka 10. He died. Emileleki died. Alimeleki akafa. His two sons died. Pia vijana wake wawili wakafa. And the wife was left with the two daughters in law. Na bibi yake akabaki na wajana wawili mabinti. Now I want to speak to us today. Nataka kusukumza nasi siku ya leo. We might be the Ruth, I mean we might be this family. Tunaweza kuwa kama jamii ile. In a way in our families. Katika jamii zetu. Or in our lives. Hata katika maisha yetu. I don't know where you've gone without consulting God. Sijui umeenda wapi bila kutafuta ushauri. I don't know what you've done without consulting. Sijui nini umefanya bila kutafuta ushauri kwa Mungu. And after there are things that are affecting you. Na kuna mambo inayofuata pale. There after Some death are occurring in your life. Kuna unakuta ya kwamba kuna mambo yamekujia katika maisha yako. Somewhere somewhere you're not getting why is this happening to me? Na hujui kwa nini nafanyika kwangu. Now go back to the drawing board. Edea katika bere za Bwana. And ask yourself. Na muulize na ulijiulize. Did I consult God? Je, nilipata mashauri kwa Mungu? Did I consult God? Nilipata mashauri kwa Mungu? A minute I talk to the young people in the house. Do I have the young people in the house? Kuna vijana ndani ya nyumba. Please wave at me. Nipugie mkono. Now there is something I want to let us know. Kuna kitu nataka tukajue. As young people we don't need information. Kama vijana hatutafuti mashauri. As young people we don't need information we need revelation. Kama vijana tunahitaji ufunuo hatutaji. I say we need habari. revelation not information. Tunahitaji ufunuo sio mashauri ama maneno. Can I tell you why? Nikwambie kwa nini? <laughs> information is not the truth. Habari unaopata sio ukweli. Revelation is the truth. Ufunuo ndio ukweli. I'm saying revelation is the truth. Nasema ufunuo ndio ukweli. The Bible says that Jesus said I am the way. Bibi nasema Yesu akasema mimi ndiyejia The truth and the life ukweli na uzima Now you get to understand unapata kujua that the truth you are talking about ukweli ambao tunaogea kuhusu That is what we need Hiyo ndio tunahitaji Eh talk to me I'm saying we need the truth Nasema tunahitaji ukweli Information will not take you anywhere Habari haitakupeleka popote Information will not take you anywhere it will mislead you Habari itaweza kukutupishajia The information you are getting in WhatsApp. Habari ambayo unapata kwa WhatsApp. The information you are getting in Twitter. Habari ambayo unapata kwa Twitter. The information you are getting in Facebook. Habari unaopata kwa Facebook. There's something I normally ask myself. Kuna kitu ambao nimekuwa nikijiuliza. A person will wake up very early in the morning. Mtu atamuka asubuhi na mapema. Saa 12. 
na the morning devotion yenye yako nayo ni whatsapp na anaikia kwa whatsapp kama morning devotion ama kama ibada yake ya asubuhi young kwa. men and ladies we need to change vijana tunahitaji mabadiliko if really our generation has to move to another state kama kizazi ketu kitaenda katika hatua ingine it is us ni sisi i'm very sure you, you if you look at our our pastors here unapoangalia washugaji wetu hapa there are some things they had to detach themselves from kuna mambo ambayo walibidi wajinyime for them to be here ili wawe hapa siku ya leo we are all called we are all called tumeitwa but few are chosen lakini ni wachache sana wameteuliwa i pray that the chosen people are here ni naomba ya kwamba wale wameshauliwa people who will be able to stand and say not what the world is saying yes vijana ambao watasimama waseme hapana kwa sababu people who are ready to say this is the way vijana ambao watasema hii ndio the way that is the bible that is going to lead you hii ambayo ni biblia itakuelekeza if you are not going to follow the bible then death will be your portion kama hautafuata biblia kifo cha kwa the bible will not lead you you will perish kama biblia itakuelekeza utaangamia God, you don't Vi, need men vijana mnahitaji mungu sio watu even if your father owns the planet earth you still need god unahitaji mungu hata kama baba yako even if you own everything in this world you still need god hata kama una kila kitu duniani unahitaji mungu you still need god in your life mungu. you need god for you to reach where you want to be unahitaji mungu you need god to live that life you want to live unahitaji mungu ufike mahali ambapo unataka kuwa i love god i love god i love this god mungu napenda he is faithful ni mwaminifu he is loving ni mungu he is caring he does not matter your background hajalishi ubali unatoka he is not bothered by where you come from hajalishi ubali unatoka he is bothered by where he is taking you It is you to stand and say God this is the way. Ni Mungu usimamu sana Mungu dio dia. Can you himself in your life? It is you to stand and tell God that I want to go to this direction. Unless you tell God the way that you want to go. He will never lead you. He will never lead you. He needs you to walk with him. He needs you to stand with him. Anahitaji usimame naye. Hey, young man, sagging is not the revelation I'm talking about. You sagging troza is not the revelation that I'm talking si about. I'm saying going to disco is not the revelation that I'm talking si about. Amen. Let, let me tell us something. Wacha niwaambie kitu. You will go to disco. Utaenda kwa dance. Dance, you dance. You dance. Umwe na mabafu na utapata shida ya magonjo. But come for Keshas. Lakini uje katika mkesha. Kuja kwa mkesha. Dance for the Lord. Umibia he mungu. will strengthen you day by day. Atakupatia Mungu nguvu siku baada ya kile. Thank God will strengthen you day by day. Mungu atakupatia nguvu siku baada ya kile. There is there is nothing that God can never do in your life. Hakuna kitu Mungu aweza kufanya juu ya maisha yako. The problem is that we've not allowed it to move Shida in our life. Shida ni kwamba hujamkubalisha atebee nawe. A Christian for 10 years and you are stagnant. Wewe ni Mkristo ndani ya miaka 10 lakini bado unasimama. A Christian for 20 years and nothing has happened in your life. Mkristo miaka 10 lakini maisha haija It's our time young men to wake up. Ni wakati wetu vijana tuchimame. This is what like we will never preach it before. Na tuhubiri hii kama tunahubiri tena. Let us speak this word until the the fourth generation in our lives Wacha, will stand for God. Waacha tuhubiri neno mpaka kizazi cha 4 kisimame na Mungu. The problem that we are going through shida unaopitia it's because of the foundation of our parents because grandparents and Whatever they Nika never stop ya muziki ya wazazi na mababu zetu watu simama na Mungu. Today. Na ndiposa tunaumia siku ya leo. We don't know the truth today. Na ndiposa hatujui ukweli leo. I was I was, I felt very bad for the Masaku servants. I was around that place. Nilikuwa mahali pale. When it pari. was happening. Wakati ilikuwa inafanyika. People inapanyi. walking naked. Watu walikuwa wanatembea uchi. Can I talk to ladies in the house? When you walk shana, naked you are exposing your emptiness. E, kwa pa, I say when you are walking naked you are telling us how empty you are. Unapotembea uchi na kuonekana kwa so uchi utupu. It does Aiman, not mean you are so hot. Imaanisha kwa ba wewe ni mzuri. Because you are hot you are walking naked. Ati unajua wewe huu unaenda uchi kwa sababu wewe. Hata msiposema amen ishindu. You cannot walk naked. Hawezi ukatembea uchi and get a revelation. Na upate ufunuo. You be messed up. Utakuwa pale utapata tatizo. You will be messed up. Utapata tatizo. Let me tell us something. Wacha niwaambie kitu. It is better God. Ni heli Mungu. He will never ashamed you. Hata kuibisha. He will take you to your destiny. Atakupeleka katika uku wako. Hey, praise the Lord. Bina la Bwana lipewe sifa. Jina la Bwana lipewe sifa. When you live for God. Unapoishia Mungu And you know there's something that I normally say Kuna kitu ambao mimi husema When you give your life to God Unapopatiana maisha yako kwa Mungu And you really mean it 
na we unamaanisha he will mean it in your life atamaanisha katika maisha yako he will mean it when you're dealing with your issues atamaanisha akishughulikia mambo yako people will stand and say i, I want the god of that lady watu watasema nasema nataka mungu wa dada by that gentleman mungu is the one who i want because god will never ashamed kwa sababu mungu hawezi akoibisha he will never hata koibisha he will never hata koibisha i say he will never nasema hata koibisha these people went the wrong way Ah watu walienda katika jia baya. And that's why disaster struck their lives. Na diposa matatizo ikaingia kwenye maisha yao. But I thank God for Naomi. Lakini nashukuru Mungu kwa sababu ya binti Naomi. She lost everything. Alipoteza kila kitu. But she never lost the thoughts. Lakini hakupoteza ile mawazo. Of tracing her way back. Akafuate jia kwenye alikotoka. She never lost the thought of tracing the way. Hakupoteza mawazo ya kurudi alikotoka. You might have messed up somewhere. Unaweza kuwa ulipata shida mahali lakini trace your way back. Fuata jia, fuata jia. We serve a faithful God. Tunaabudu Mungu mkuu. He will receive you atakupokea he will receive you atakupokea he will not condemn you atakuweza kukwemea he will receive atakupokea you know i normally say out of the mess that you go through unajua nasema kupitia matatizo unaopitia there is a message for somebody kuna ujumbe kwa mtu out of that mess kwa sababu ya matatizo yale there is a message for somebody kuna ujumbe kwa mtu if you don't realize that this was a mess na kabla ugudue kwamba ni matatizo you will never give never deliver that message to whoever you are hautapasha ujumbe ule kwa mtu be accountable for it. Na utakuwa mtu wa kuliswa shwari. Chapter 2 of Ruth. Tunasoma Ruth 2. You, you when you you read the story when the lady the mother in law is going back. Wakati Naomi anaporudi. She calls the daughter in law, the daughter's in law. Anaita mabinti wale. And she's speaking to them. Na wanazungumzia. That I'm old. Ya kwa mimi mzee. I'm going back home. Naenda nyumbani. And when I go home, now she was trying to hurt them to go and look for their ways on how to survive wa kwao as you reach she's telling them unaposoma anawaambia hivi that even if i was to get married today atakama nigeolewa leo i will not get a, 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 a son who you will be able to wait until he gets married sitapata kijana ba atawagozia mpaka nyinyi aweze kuoa so offer and 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 ruth were 50 50 kwa hivyo offer na ruth walikuwa nusu nusu where should i go Je, mimi niende wapi? Where should I go? Niende wapi? I know many of us are in that situation. Je, watu wengine tuko katika hali ya tashwishi? Niende wapi? Where should I go? Niende wapi? There is an answer for you. Kuna jawabu siku ya leo. Choose Christ. Chagua Kristo. Choose Christ. Chagua Kristo. This lady Ruth, huyu msichana ayu mwanamke Ruth. I thank God for her. Nashukuru Mungu kwa, kwa sababu yake. She was able to the, to make the, 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 the best choice. Alikuwa na wakati wa kukata kauli mzuri. She made the best choice. Alikata kauli mwafaka. And and when you read um chapter 2 verse 8, unaposoma sura ya 2 mstari wa 8. Not that one wait. The, the, there is not chapter 2 it, oh, the chapter 1 where 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 Naomi 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 talks to them until Ofa realizes it. Ah, I still have time. Let me go and look for a man to marry me. She has she the, at the first time she had agreed we Wakati are going kwanza, with you. But naeda. later she is changing her mind. Lakini baadaye anabadilisha nini? And she has decided to go back. Na kaamua nitarudi nyuma. But this is Ruth saying to her mother in law. Lakini Ruth anamwambia mama yake That wherever you will go. Popote utakapoenda you are people. Watu wenu will be my people. Watakuwa watu wangu. Now Ruth never allowed the religious to 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 mess her mind up. Ludhu hakukubalisha udini ukaweza kukorofisha mawazo yake. She never even bothered of the parents what they are going to say. Hakutaka kujua wazazi wake watasema nini. She never even bothered of what the friends are going to say. Hatataka kujua vile marafiki watasema. And Makuru that not given birth. Na Ludhu hakuweza. Hakuwa na mtoto bado alikuwa. Bado alikuwa msawa. Bado alikuwa bikira mzuri. Eh she didn't have children. Hakuwa na watoto. Now she could have decided to go and get married to another young Agekua man. Hakuwa na kauli ya kwenda kuolewa na mwanaume mwingine ambaye ni tajiri. Who was something? Abako na kitu. Hey lady something? Je, yeah, was, was Please was, talk wadada. to me I'm saying who was something? Ab, was chana okay ni nami nasema ana kitu. Let us not be messed by material things. Tusiwe watu wa kukorofishwa na vitu za hapa duniani. Eh they will mess you. Zita kukorofisha. You will enjoy for a given period. Utaweza kufurahia tu kwa muda mfupi. And there after God knows. Na baadaye Mungu ndiye anajua. Ruth decided to go with her mother. Ruth akaamua kwenda pamoja na Naomi. And they went. Na wakaenda. On their way uh, when they were about to reach. Wakati walikuwa karibu kufika mahali pale. Some ladies not noticed they were coming. 
Wadada wengine wakajua kwamba wakaona wanaja. And they are saying is that true? Na wasema je yule ni Is that Naomi? Je yule ni Naomi? Naomi is saying don't call me Naomi. Naomi anasema msiniite tena Naomi. I am empty. Mimi sina kitu. Go, the the God's hand has been upon me. Ya kwamba Mungu adhabu ya Mungu imekuwa juu yangu. The God's hand has been upon me. Adhabu ya Mungu imekuwa juu yangu. When you read that statement you realize Ruth had, Naomi had given up. Unaposoma ile unajua kwamba Naomi alikuwa amefujika moyo. She was just tracing her way back so that when she gets when she dies she be buried at her Alikuwa anafuata nyayo za kule alikotoka ili akifa. I'm talking to somebody who is about to lose her. Nataka kusungumza na mtu ambaye anafujika moyo. I'm talking to a person who has already losing her. Na sugumza na mtu ambaye anafujika moyo. And there is no direction. Na unaona kana kwa ba hakuna hakuna kuletea tena. You search for job and there is nothing for me. Umetafuta kazi hujapata mafanikio. Umetafuta mzee hujapata mafanikio. Let me take that statement. You don't look for husbands. Hutafuti Ladies, mzee, hutafuti. We don't look for husbands. So Hatutafuti mabwana. Did Eve look for Adam? Je, what happened? Je, ilifanyika for another day. So we don't look for husbands. Hatutafuti mabwana, niwaambie. So what am I saying? Je, they went ni... back. Walienda mbinyuma. They reached the, the land. Wakafika kwao. And now chapter 2 talks of Ruth meeting Bo- Boaz. Na sura ya pili naongea kuhusu Ruth wakikutana na Boaz. Now Boaz is the destiny connector for this lady. Boaz ndiye anaweza kushikanisha, ndiye anatumiwa kushikanisha ule katika uku wake. I want to let us know. Nataka nikufanye ujue. Don't give up yet. Usifujike moyo. Your destiny connector is on the way. Yule ambaye atakufikisha katika uku wako yupo. connector is coming. Yule ambaye anakufikisha uku wako ana you are trying to give up ya kwamba wakati ule anataka preparing things for you mungu anatayarisha mambo yake that you are thinking of giving up ile wakati unatayarisha kufika mujisa wako uko pale kwenye mlango na when you give up you mess na ukifujika utaweza kukorofisha ruth goes to the to the field of boaz ruth anaenda pale kwa boma ya boaz where she finds the people who are cultivating alipata watu wakifanya kazi kwenye shamba la boaz and she asked for a permission to go after them collecting na, what they've left na kauliza ruhusa kwenda kuweza kuokota zile walikuwa naokosa okota now this tell you she was desperate hii inakwambia vile alikuwa amefujika moyo didn't have anything to eat hawakuwa na chochote cha kula and that's why she was collecting after them na diposa alikuwa anaenda kuokota zile nafaka ambao walikuwa wameagucha pale but now here comes verse 8 na dipo inakuja pale msali wake wa nani so boha said to ruth Dipo Boaz akamwambia Ruth My daughter listen to me Hebu nisikilize binti yangu Don't don't go and clean in another field Usiende kuokota masuka mahali pengine And don't go away from here Ila katika shaba hili tu Stay here with my servant girls Ka hapa na watumizi wangu Watch the field Watch the field where the men are harvesting Waangalie vile wanaume wanavyofanya kazi And follow along Na ufuate After the girls I have told the men paka mara mabinti nimewaambia wale wanaume listen to this carefully let me, let me just read chapter 9 watch, watch, watch the field where the men are harvesting and follow along with girls i have told the men not to touch you and whenever you are thirsty go and get a drink from the water jars the men have filled sura ya 9 angalia mahali wavunapo ujiuge nao Nimewaona vijana hawa wasikusubue na ukiona kiu nenda kwenye mtugi unywe maji walivyoteka hao vijana Shikilia tu hiyo twende John chapter 4 and that eight Twende katika Ayubu 4 I'll read John 4 Yohana 4 mm. that 8 mstari wake wa 38 Oh I sent you to reap that for which you have not labored others have labored and you have entered into their labor mimi nimewatuma mkafune mafuno ambayo hamku yatolea jasho. Wengine walifanya kazi lakini nyinyi mnafaidika kutokana na jasho lao. Now these are the benefits that you get when you serve God. Hii ma, 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 unapata I say mungu. these are the benefits that you will get when you serve God faithfully. Hii faida unaopata They will be harvesting for you and 
for you it's just going picking and enjoying watakuwa nafanya kazi unakula chakula they'll just be doing work for you watafanya kazi kwa miaba yako the work you will go and take what they have done na wakifanya kazi utaenda utaenda kufurahia those are the benefits that we got we get when we serve god hiyo ndio faida tunaopata tukitumikia mungu the bible is saying that ruth was told by this man bibi nasema ruth akamwambia na boazi that i've told the young men nimewaambia vijana not to touch you wasikuguze i told the young men not to touch you nimewaambia vijana wasikuguze problems not to touch you mungu ameambia shida isikusubue god has told the trouble not to touch you mungu ameambia matatizo isikusubue god has told the poverty not to touch you mungu ameambia tatizo chia maskini isikusubue now for god to reach that point of talking to that situation not to touch you ili mungu afike kiwango ya kuambia tatizo isikusubue you must have walked step by step with him lazima uwe umetembea na Mungu hatua kwa hatua lazima uwe mwaminifu kwa Mungu you must be that servant where you not allow the obstacles of life to turn you around lazima uwe ule mtumishi ambao hujakubalisha matatizo ya dunia kusubua only that point okay. only at that point ni katika kiwango ile when god will guide you like he has guided this lady ambao Mungu atakuweza kukulinda kama vile alivyolinda ruzi that she in that land akopatika ile nchi I ama ile chaba field, au katika shaba ile she will eat atakula she will drink atakunywa she will have enough to take to the mother in law atapata ya kutosha kumpelekea mama yake na the young men will have nothing to say about na vijana hawatakuwa na jambo la kumuuliza now i i i how i pray that we may be such faithful that god will order things to work for us naomba ya kwamba ukue mwaminifu kiwango mungu atamwisha mambo yake i pray that we may be faithful enough god to order situation to turn around for us naomba uwe mwaminifu mungu akaweza kuamulisha mambo ikatendeke juu ya maisha yako There are benefits that you get when you you serve God. Kuna faida unaopata ukitumikia Mungu. First, the first one, ya kwanza, when you serve God faithfully. Unapotumikia Mungu kwa uaminifu, God must visit you and he must make you prosper. Lazima Mungu akutembelee na kufanya unawiri. I say God will visit your life and he will make you prosper. Nasema Mungu atakutembelea katika maisha yako na atakufanya unawiri. Psalm 92:12 to 15. Nasoma katika sabuli 92 12 to 15 12 kupaka 10 na 5 The rest shall flourish like a palm tree he shall grow he shall grow like a cell cedar in the Lebanon Yasema hivi wadilifu hustawi kama umi kama mitede those who are planted in the house of the lord shall flourish in the courts of our god kama miti kama kama miti iliyo padwa nyumbani mwa Mwenyezi Mungu they shall still bear fruit in old age hustawi katika nyua za Mungu wetu they shall be they shall be fresh and flourishing huendelea kuzaa matunda hata uzeeni daima wamejaa utomvu na wabishi praise the lord jina la bwana lipewe sifa that is a portion for a righteous man hiyo inakuwa ni kwamba ni ile faida ya mtu mtakatifu that as you serve god you must prosper unapotumikia mungu lazima unanawili it doesn't matter how long it will take haijalishi tashukua muda gani but prosperity will locate you lakini lazima kufanikiwa kutakutafuta kukunawili kutakutafuta popote there is something i was i was understanding when i was reading the story of david kuna kitu nilikuwa naweza kutafakari kwa nasoma hadithi ya Daudi. When David was being anointed there, he was called from the field to be anointed. Wakati Daudi aliitwa akapakwa mafuta, alikuwa pale akishuga kodo. When kodo. this guy was anointed, trouble was attracted to him. Wakati alipakwa mafuta, tatizo zilikuja kwake. I'm saying when this guy got the anointing. Naposema kwamba wakati Daudi alipopata upako. Even his brothers started abusing him. Hata ndugu zake wenyewe wakaanza kumuinukia. Now some of us are having troubles. They are only being attracted by the anointing that the Lord has released in you. Wengine wanapitia shida maana upako ulionao ndio unavuta maana. And because you've not understood this thing. Na kwa sababu hujaelewa vile. Each and every morning you are telling God this problem must go. Kila asubuhi unaambia Mungu problem must shida yende. Lazima hii shida lazima problem must go. Now some peninas in your life are not made to go. Penina wengine juu ya maisha yako hawako penina wengine wanapaswa kukaa penina wengine wanapaswa kukaa penina 
has to be in your life to push you to your destiny. Wakusukume katika ukuwako. And yet you are bringing this problem. Na unaopa shida yodoke. You know, we we there are many things we pray God. Kuna mambo mingi according to His will. Kuna mambo mingi tunaomba Mungu lakini sio kulingana na mapenzi yake. And that's why the Bible tells us that we should pray in spirit and according to God's will. Na deposit bila toza bila kwamba tuombe kwa roho na kulingana na mapenzi ya Mungu. Don't just wake up and tell God I need water. Usiambie Mungu amka asubuhi unahitaji Mungu unahitaji maji kwa haraka. Supposing God has said you won't drink water that day. Je kama Mungu alikuwa ameamua hutapata maji. Siku hiyo? Will you still force him to give you water? Je utamlazimisha kutumia maji? Now that is very faithful. Mungu muamini muaminifu. Something we ask and he will give them to us. Kuna vitu ambao utauliza na atakupatia. Atakupea njozi kunyorose. He will give you so that you can be aligned. Atakupatia ili sikuweke sawa sawa. So as we pray let us be praying according to God's will. Tunapooba tuobe kuligana na mapenzi ya Bwana. The second benefit. Faida ya pili. God makes you to be relevant. Mungu anakufanya kwamba unakuwa we wa wakati. Judges 11. Kitabu cha Waamuzi 11. You serve God faithful. Unapotumikia Mungu kwa wakati. You be relevant to your generation. Utakuwa na ufunuo ama I see you will be relevant to your generation. Utakuwa na ufunuo wa wakati. Judges 11. Waamuzi 11. 1 2 hadi 3. Now ja, it, it, the story of this guy Let me paraphrase it. This guy was born of a prostitute. Uy. And because the brothers in that family never liked him, they chased him. Hawakupedwa na deposa wakamfukuza. And when they chased him, they at some point of their life God made sure that they would look for him. Na wakati ambapo Mungu alifanya kuwa katika maisha yao watakuja kumtafuta. And when this guy was looked for, na wakati alipoenda kutafutwa, he gave them a condition akawapa masharti if I'm, i'm to come back and fight for you kama nitakuja kuwapigania then i must be your head lazima niwe kiongozi wenu i must lead you ni lazima niwaogoze they agreed wakakubali he came back akaja they went and fought wakaeta na wakapigana god made him succeed mungu akamfanya akaweza kufanikiwa and they had no option but to allow him to be there hawakuwa na likini ile kuwakubali kuwa now anybody who has been chasing you in your life mtu yote ambao amekuwa akiwakibisha kwenye maisha or anybody who has made you irrelevant in your life yote ambao amekufanya kwamba umepitwa na kati ya maisha tell them to watch the space mwambie akuangalie tell them to watch the space mwambie akuangalie because god is making a turn around in your life maana mungu anafanya mabadiliko juu ya maisha yako and god appears in your life na wakati mungu anatokea katika maisha yako let me give this illustration Wacha ni wapatie We all know helicopter Tunajua helicopter When it is coming to land Wakati ile ndege inakuja kupaa Anything that is not needed there at the ground Chochote ambacho hakihitaji kwenye pale lazima iondoke lazima iondoke Lazima ipatie chuo Now when God will be landing in your life Wakati Mungu atakuwa na pale juu ya maisha yako Necessary in your life Chochote ambacho hitaji katika maisha yako lazima iondoke Anybody that is not needed in your life Yote hitaji katika maisha yako lazima apatie chuo He will have to pay for it Lazima apatie like it or not Kana manataka ama haraki Helicopter yambiangi mawe tokeni ama makaratasi They just find their way wanapata tu jia so people will have to be relocated lazima watu wengine wataondolewa ili wewe ukaweza I tell you you will land lazima ukapata and as you land you are great you will be the greater they've never seen na utakuwa mkubwa you know, kuliko wale wote you know we sit down and say in my background there is no person who has gone beyond class 8 unasema kwamba nasema kwenye kwenye nimetoka hakuna mtu anatuambia kitu for me i'm happy because i have a phd mimi nimefurahi maana niko na phd pulling events down praise the lord I still have a BA. Nina BA. I born again. Nimeokoka. So everything else will rotate on my way. Chochote kile kitasukuka juu. I say everything jua. else will be attracted to. Chochote kile kitafutiwa kwa. God is kwa. not bothered by how far you've gone. Mungu hajali kubali umetoka. He's bothered by your heart. Anajalishwa na moyo wako. That that you give him. Moyo ambao unampatia. Release yourself to him. Yashirie bale zako. He will release everything to you. Atashiria chochote juu ya macho yako na maisha yako itabadilika. Praise the Lord. Jina la Bwana lipewe sifa. The third one. Ya tatu. Give, God will give you a new song. Mungu atakupatia wibo mpya. I tell you you will sing a new song. Na kuambia utaiba wibo mpya. Psalms 37:126. Uh, yeah, Psalms 37 and Psalms 126. Zaburi 137. Hiyo tutasoma yote. You just go and read. 
Neto you, nyubani ukafika ukasome. As you remain faithful to God, unapokuwa maaminifu mbele za Bwana. You must sing a new song. Lazima utaiba wimbo mpya. You can't sing the song that your grandmother sang. Uwezi ukaiba wimbo ambao yako waiba. You can't the same song with your grandfather. Uwezi ukaiba hiyo ambao babu yako alipo. As long as you serve God and remain faithful. Ila tu unatumikia Mungu na wewe ni mwaminifu. He will surprise you. Atakuweza kushtusha. He will take you to places. Atakupeleka mahali. Where people will not even they will be fearing to point at you. They'll just be doing like Watu watakuwa naogopa kukuelekezea kidogo. Huyu. watasema huyu huyu and them those who never invited you in their places na wale hawakukualika mahali kwao they will be looking for you watakuwa nakutafuta they will be looking for you watakuwa nakutafuta <laughs> they will invite you to be the guest of honor watakualika uwe mgeni mheshimiwa whether class 8 or class 3 hata kama wewe ni wa darasa la 8 he does not he is not bothered by by how how educated you are hajalishi fira wewe umesoma but as long as you have this education of his word lakini kama una ile hekima anayo na bwana he will take you atakupeleka mahali something else jambo lingine god will separate you with unfriendly friends mungu atakuteganisha na wale marafiki wanafiki or he will make you forget your trouble atakufanya usahau shida zako katika nyumba ya baba yako and he will make you na atakufanya fruitful in the land of your affliction uwe na matunda katika ile nchi yako ya dhiki genesis 41:50 to 52 mwanzo 41:1 alobaini mpaka 52 and joseph And just and to Joseph were born two sons before the years of famine came whom whom Asenta the daughter of Potiphar's priest on, of Horn bore to him Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh for God has made me forgot all my toil and all my father's house And the name of the second he called Ephraim for God has caused me to for, to be fruitful in the land of my affliction Let me talk to us brethren God is not is not bothered by your background but what is what you have as in if you release yourself to him even in that land where people do not prosper hata katika ile nchi watu waendelee wewe utakuwa wa kwanza kuendelea you will be the first one to be to go where they've never gone wewe utakuwa wa kwanza kwenda mahali wa chakula the condition is na changamoto ni hii remain faithful kuwa mwaminifu be righteous kuwa mtakatifu now for there are principles for you to be to do what now for you to remain in that position of righteousness. Ili ukae katika kiwango ile utakatifu. And that's why I started by saying we need revelation and not information. Na diposa ilisema unahitaji ufunuo sio habari. Because I said revelation is the truth. Kwa sababu nikasema kwamba ufunuo ndio ukweli. And now uh, the Bible tells us that we are the salt. Biblia inatuambia kwamba sisi ndio chumvi. And we are the light of the world. Na sisi ndio mwaga wa ulimwengu. Now I was asking myself. Nilikuwa najiuliza hivi. Why did he did say that we are the sugar? Kwa nini hakusema sisi ndio sukari? Why did it say that we are the salt of the world? Kwa nini akasema sisi ndio chumvi ya dunia? <laughs> And this is what I was getting. Na hii ndio nilikuwa napata. For sugar for you to use sugar them those who use. Kwa wale wanatumia sukari, uwezi tumia kale kajiko kamoja na utosheke. Utaad. But salt lakini chumvi unaweka kidogo. Kidogo na inashika young people. We don't need to be a group for us to go for a mission. Hatuhitaji kuwa vikundi kama vijana hii tuende kwa ushirika. We don't want to be a whole bus for us to go for a mission. Hatuhitaji kuwa bus nzima ili tuende katika mkutano huu. Only one of you. Mmoja tu. God will use you. Mungu atakutumia. Hatuhitaji sukari mingi ndio chakula yetu itest. We don't need many of us. You know We are most of us are being discouraged because you know Lisa if we are going for a mission you are asking ni wangapi wanaenda Now kwa mbinguni you will not be asking how many are we, are we going it will be personal Itakuwa ni ya kibinafsi That should be as personal as it is for you even to deal with your salvation or life Inafakuwa kibinafsi hata mnapo Hautaitwa wewe na marafiki zako Mungu akuulize mlileta wangapi ni ulileta wangapi That will be the language in heaven Not how many did you at mlikuwa mlileta wangapi it will be you and you alone Itakuwa wewe na wewe peke yako Now if you will not if you will just live in the house of the Lord doing nothing Kama utakaa kwenye nyumba ya Bwana ufanye chochote God will be doing nothing in your life Mungu hatafanya kitu katika maisha yako That's why we are stagnant Na diposa unakuta utuko pale kisoko Apostle will just get born again here Mtu ataokolewa leo 
and he will start doing mighty in this kingdom and there is still huu. another person who got born again 10 years na kuna mwingine aliyokamiaka 10 iliyopita and there is nothing happening in his life na hakuna kitu inatendeka katika maisha yake now let us not be born again and sit down we need to go outside there and preach this word. We need to go outside there and speak this word. We have courage and boldness. Speak as if you know what you are saying. Don't stammer. That only verse that you know. Please go and speak it. Speak it with confidence. Do I have young people in the house? God is calling us God is calling us in this generation. Mungu anatuita katika kizazi hichi. It will be too bad of us if we sit down and look at our friends perish and still we born again. Itakuwa makosa kubwa ukati chini kuona ndugu zetu wakiagamia na hali tumeokoka. For them those who are in school, how do those people that you are in class, how do they can they describe you? Wale walio katika shule, wale mnasoma nao wanasema wewe ni nani? What testimony do they have about you and your Christ? Je, wana ushahidi gani na mugu wako? Or when you appear they see and you, somebody says that lady is born again they will close their Hai zentias. Na mtu akitokea sema yako bila dada ameokoka watafuga macho yao. Let us straighten our ways. Waacha tutengeneze jia zetu. As much as we want to move from the emptiness to the to the greatness. Vile vile unataka kutoka katika utupu mpaka huku lazima ubadilishe. We are still needed to work on our salvation. Tuahitaji kwa sababu tukaweza kufanya cha kazi wako wetu. I like what my brother talked about here. Na hidiposa dugu yangu akasema hapa. If 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 at all you will be sitting down and talking the the the, the ile ile woko via mdomo tu i'm born again and that's all that is how far you can go hapo dipo ubali then you have no help in this kingdom hauna faida katika ufalme stretch yourself as far as going to speak to your neighbor jivute ukaweza kwenda kuna neno and tell them about the love of god na uwaambie jirani yako kuhusu upendo wa mungu let us not be selfish with this word tusia watu ambao wanajipenda neno hili it was not made for you alone halitakuwa aliyo lako peke yako it was made for each and every one of us ilikuwa ni neno la kila mmoja and as you sit down and listen to god speak and do doing he does mighty in your life na unapokaa kusikiza vile mungu anafanya makuu katika maisha yako please go and share with some don't look down on, on yourself and say I know nothing that little you know that is what God needs praise the Lord praise the Lord praise the Lord I thank God I bless God. Na, na mungu sifa na because as you serving faithfully. Kwa sababu unapotumika kwa uaminifu, you will never remain small in the circle of life. Hautakuwa mdogo katika ile golida la maisha. As you serve God, unapotumikia Mungu, you will be faithful enough to show it to people that you this lady serves God. Utakuwa mwaminifu kuonesha watu wa kwamba huyu kijana ama huyu dugu ama dada anatumikia Mungu. Tusimame, tusimame what time is gone. As I welcome our pastor and this is what I have to say to the young people. As much as you need information, if at all it is a necessity in your life, at least try and get revelation. Compare both of them. And I'm sure God will give you the way out. As you compare your, your, your information and the revelation, how I pray that God will turn things around. And as you turn them around, you will never remain the same. You be the turning point in your family. You be the, people, the person that people will admire. You be that person that people will always want to be attached. There are many people who have not gone as far as university. But today, most people want to be attached to them. And they are not learning. Let us not lie to ourselves. That having money and everything in life that is the end of it all. We need God, God and the bread that we need for the next minute. We need God to walk with us. We need God to, to, to give us the way out. We need God to lead our ways. And if, if at all God speaks to his people I'm sure he does He could be revealing to like 
ten people of what is happening about this nation. Anaweza kuwa anapatia ufunuo kwa watu kama 10 vile ambao because you are so busy for him to speak to us. Lakini kwa sababu sisi tuna mambo. That you are realizing these are things are happening and you are not aware. Because unakuta mambo inakukuta pasipo kujua. God is calling us for an awakening of our spiritual life. Mungu anatuita ili tukahuishwe kiroho. Let us not be born again and sleep sleep in this world. Tusiye watu ambao tumeokoka lakini tumelala. Arise and shine as he says. Shimama uagaze. Arise and shine. Shimama na uagaze. For the glory of God to shine in our lives. Ili utukufu wa Bwana ukaweza kuagaza jua maisha yako. And as you shine. Na unapoagaza. The glory of God will be shining upon you. Utukufu wa Bwana utaagaza juu yako. And people will be attracted watatractiwa na hiyo light na watu watavutwa na ule mwanga people will be attracted to that light watu watakuwa wanavutwa na ule mwanga because the bible says light and darkness has never been together maana maandiko yasema kwamba mwanga hasiwezi kuandamana darkness gives way wakati mwanga unaopotokea giza lazima inatoweka How I pray that the light of god will shine upon na hapa kwamba mwanga wa bwana ukaweza kuelekeza and it being youth week na, na ikiwa ni wiki ya vijana Don't just say it was youth week and if I ask you there is nothing that happened in Usi your life. Or you never even touched somebody's life. We still have a, We still have some some minutes before tu, the day ends. Tu, tu, tu kama masa, you, kama can, si you can go and even preach to somebody there at, at the street. Unaweza eda pale kwa barabara kwa bibi yangu. Unaweza go and confess how God has done. Can I tell us mungu mungu something mungu people of God? Kitu, Let me tell us something. Some people are moved even by by the testimony that you give. Watu wengine wanaweza tu kuelekea kwa kwa kufuatia na ushahidi. God has blessed them to wait for that testimony. Mungu wa, Mungu ameweka mahali wasikie ushahidi. And for you when God does it for you you just saying this is for me and myself. Na wewe Mungu ayutadea unanyamasa unasema ni yako na mimi peke yangu. Let us stand up and go to preach this word. Tusimame tu na tukahubiri. Whether our parents did it or not. Hata kama wazazi walihubiri ama hawakuhubiri. Whether my friend is doing or not. Hata kama rafiki ahubiri ama hawakuhubiri here and say that if my friend is not going i will not Tusiseme go kama rafiki yangu haidi kuku because when the day come you will be alone kwa sababu wakati utakapokuja utakuwa group hautakuwa unaitwa kama kama kikudi may god reveal it unto each and every one of us wacha mungu atupatie ufunuo kila mmoja wetu especially the young men hasa vijana ambao tuko hapa i feel so bad to see people perishing and yet we are in church mimi usikia vibaya kuona watu wengi wa kanisa we are worshiping we are praising god chana tukiaburu na kusifu can i talk something then you get it there is an habit that i've seen kuna tabia nimeona I, i thank god i've been given this opportunity na nashukuru mungu mara nimepoantiwa nafasi hii those people who go to whatsapp na tuko church shame on you wale watu wanaenda kwa whatsapp na tuko kwa kanisa aibu kwao if you come to church and you are chatting in whatsapp shame on you unapokuja kanisa na uko pale kwa whatsapp aibu kwako even if you are not respecting god atakama uheshimu atakama uheshimu mungu ndio unaona respect the pastor that is standing here heshimu mchumuge respect the person that is standing here heshimu yule anasimama kwenye and mind you the altar will record everything that you are doing na nikwambie and it will fight you wherever ili madhabahu itanana mbele come to church and chat in whatsapp ili madhabahu wewe inanena facebook and twitter uenda pale unanena pastor is preaching here and you are speaking ubiria kwa pale na uko pale una uko kwa whatsapp usio unanena kwa kanisa causes you to speak kama rafiki yako anakuelekeza kuzungumza ama kupika makaa kwa kanisa then he is leading you to destroy to be destroyed anakuelekeza kwa uharibifu but i thank god of a second chance lakini nashukuru mungu mara nafasi ya pili if you been doing that kama umekuwa ukifanya vile See our pastors and repent. Ona washugaji wewe na ukaweza katubu ni dhabi. Kwa nini usiende WhatsApp ukiwa nyumbani? Why? Why do we why do we do it in church? Kwa nini tufanye mambo ya WhatsApp hapa kanisani? Why do we do it? Kwa nini tuifanye kwenye nyumba ya Bwana? Why should we come in church and speak when the pastor is speaking here? Kwa nini tuje kwenye kanisa tuwasugumza wakati mhubiri ananena neno la Bwana? Young people that is not good. Vijana hii sio mzuri. And I'm speaking even to myself. Na ninasugumza pia kwa miaba yangu. Because it is not good. Kwa maana sio mzuri. That shows that you are not respecting the altar that is laid there. Hiyo ina maana ya kwamba upei heshima I like our bishop tells us that altar will register anything that you are doing. Na kama vile askofu anasema kwamba and if this altar start fighting against you. Utakuwa unasema umerogwa na hujarogwa. Wewe ndio umejiroga. Let us grow up in church young people. Please Let us grow up in church. Wacha tukue kwenye kanisa tuko Let us not behave like the Sunday school. Tusiwe kama watoto wa shule ya Jumapili. 
Praise God. Praise God, young ladies and gentlemen in the house. God loves us so much. I was just thinking, that time you are in WhatsApp, the devil is distracting you so that you cannot hear what is being told. And that he has achieved his, uh, uh, his mission. And they were in church. May God set us free. Praise God. Will you mind to just reflect on